All right, clickers, I got two questions I want to ask you. Or, sorry, four questions. <laughs> Maybe I'll think of some others. Give you a moment to log in. I'll predict latecomers. Let's see the number. All right. Oh, that made it a little bigger. Polling's open. Little review on diffraction, total internal reflection. We'll cover polarization, and in doing all this, we'll review and review some more. So I want to see what you remember from last time. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Oh, good. You're right. Diffraction is more pronounced through small openings. Think of the waves trying to cram through the opening. The smaller the opening, the more they're going to get affected and the more it'll spread out. What else would affect diffraction? Not just the size of the opening, but what's that? Wavelength. wavelength, right. Which will be diffracted more? Longer waves, because they're trying to get crammed through more. <laughs> what? Yes, red has a longer wavelength. That it does get diffracted more than blue. Through, yeah. All right, this one you might have to think a little more. Go. So we did the diffraction, it spreads out, but that happens at any edge. Then those waves can interfere. I want to see, when they interfere, what's really being affected? We've talked a lot about the result, but not actually like this, so I, I just thought this was a good question. What are the two types of interference we can have? Constructive, destructive. Think of either in terms of sound or light that we've experienced and what, what's kind of the result you see or hear. What's that, what's that really affecting the most? Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And you've all voted since I started counting. Okay. Amplitude. You are correct. Very good. Because with volume, that's amplitude. Or with brightness, either they're adding up and getting brighter or darker. Yeah, it's amplitude. It doesn't affect the frequency. That's the, it's the same note or color. Wave nature, no, we're not changing the wave itself. Phase, whether they're in or out of phase determines whether they interfere, but that's not what's being affected. It's the amplitude, that superposition of those. So good job. Majority of you, anyway. Any questions? All right, this one. Go.
This applies more generically from our color, you know, chapter. But also the thin films we did at the end of last lecture with soap bubbles or oil, gasoline on oil. Or Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hey, we gained a couple votes. Right. You guys are split between B and C. Beam of white light that reflects from a pair of closely spaced surfaces as color because some of the reflected light is deflected or subtracted from the beam. What does deflected mean? 36% of you voted for it, so you must have some guess. Be brave. Go a different direction? Yeah. Have we used that term yet? No, that is a good clue. It's not that. It is subtracted. We've used reflected, where it gets absorbed by the, the, the atoms or electrons, and then is re-emitted back in the same, in the same, into the same medium. So reflected. We have refracted. Remember, that's where it, can, it absorbs the light, um, re-emits it, but then a neighbor absorbs it. He re-emits it, and then that neighbor absorbs it, re-emits it, and if it goes through the material... It gets refracted. If it goes all the way through, it's transparent. If it gets, gets absorbed, it's opaque. We have diffracted, where it stays in the same medium, but turns or bends or spreads out. We've had scattered, which is probably the closest thing to deflected I can think of. But that's still off of the little particles, like in the in why the sky is blue. Shorter wavelengths, higher frequencies, get the scattered, you almost made me say it, scattered more than red light. And that's off little particles. If the particles become bigger, who gets scattered more? Red. Yeah, the larger particles affect the larger wavelengths, like red, so it'll scatter red. The intermediate sized particles will scatter green, and the small particles will scatter blue more. Yes, Brian? I was thinking about the, uh, the visor in your car when you flip it down because that's going to deflect it. Or like a welder's um, mask. Uh, that would deflect it. That's deflection too. The, a vi if you just wear a visor, that's an opaque substance, and it absorbs light. It also reflects some, because we can see the color of it. But it, it doesn't deflect. Well, what, is, what about deflect? In my mind, there's no deflect for light. It can reflect, refract, diffract, scatter. It has an interaction. It's not just deflect. Deflected, I like when like somebody's punching someone here. Pretend like you're punching me slowly, and you deflect it. That doesn't happen with waves, so to speak. So that was really just a bogus term to throw you off, and it worked. <laughs> Sorry. So do you think you maybe can deflect light by blocking it? But it's going to absorb some or scatter or reflect. Yeah, by blocking it, uh, it is it is one of those methods we just mentioned. You mentioned a welder's mask, too. What it does is absorb the damaging rays that would uh, harm your eyes. It absorbs those. But it lets a little bit of visible light get through so you can still see. So that's absorption. There's some reflection. The closest thing I can think of to deflection, which you'll like, Brian, is a black hole. Black holes can bend light through gravity. So as, as light travels near it, it gets, in that sense, you could think of being deflected. It's the closest thing I can think of. So bending light is, calling it, is 
deflection? Yeah, that's why we have specific terms, because if I just used bending for everything, you wouldn't know uh, the difference between refraction, diffraction, deflection, scattering. The key here, though, for colors is you're subtracting something from the beam. Um, with uh, a thin film, let me draw that again, because it was at the end. Say so you have a really blown up soap bubble film here. So this is the, the, the thickness of the soap bubble. If you have a light ray coming in, some of it reflects at the same angle it came in at. Some of it will refract. You guys probably can't see, huh? Which way will it refract? Towards the normal or away? Got one vote for towards. Does it speed up or slow down? You're right on both accounts. Thanks for participating. Yes, from air into the bubble, it slows down. Do you remember why things slow down? Let's see, I'm reviewing here. What, why does light travel more slowly through certain materials like soap? It's not absorbing because it, it's, it's going to pass through this. Oh, that's why we're re reviewing, right? Oh, go for it. The absorb, re-emit thing. Yeah, it, it, he, oh, I know what you mean. And maybe that's what you meant too, Brian, but just absorb wasn't enough. Uh, there's a great picture in your text. Let me find it. Refer you to it. Um... Page 461, 461, in case you want to look it up later. But yeah, it absorbs that proton. Uh, pro photon, I haven't used that term, sorry. It absorbs the light wave um, because the, the material either resonates with it or not. It makes it vibrate. Well, it vibrates at the same frequency as the driving light, right? So he's vibrating and re-emits his own light. And maybe she absorbs it and re-emits it. And he absorbs it and re-emits it. If it passes through, it's transparent, and it refracts. The more interactions it has like that, the more it's delayed. And that's why it travels more slowly through soap than air. The more interactions there are, the denser this material optically, it'll be slower, like diamond. Remember, air, too. You can have hot air or cold air. Which one is more dense? Cold air. So it, uh, light travels actually a little slower through cold air than hot air. So you can get refraction when it changes between the two. That can cause optical phenomena we call mirages. Right. So here... It slows down because of those interactions. And if you think of your uh, wheel axle, the right one gets slowed down. The left one's still going fast, and it bends towards the normal. Then we get another reflection. You'll get another refraction, too. This one goes back into the air inside the bubble, and it'll go away from the normal. You'll get one here, and so on. And this one away, trying to draw this to scale, but close enough. So this ray can come into your eyeball after bouncing off the front. This one comes to your eyeball after passing through, through the thin lens and back. And if it travels an extra distance, well, it does. If that is a half a wavelength out of phase with the one that reflects off the front, we get destructive interference, and that one is, is uh, canceled out. If uh, that was magenta, let's say magenta gets canceled. That was just right for destructive interference for magenta. What color do we see?
So you have to think, magenta is made up of which, which two colors of light? Red and blue. So those are getting canceled, destructively interfere. So green makes it to your eye. And you'll see a green fringe right there, green color. Again, that was assuming we started with white light because white light's made up of all three. I saw this uh, T-shirt the, the night before we had that lecture. And I go, ooh, I got to order that. <laughs> so here's your uh, primary colors of light. Additive color mixing. Red, green, and blue can form all other colors. They all mix to white. And remember that's because the uh, what in our eye responds to those? We have two types of sensors called the... Rods and cones. Which one's sensitive to color? Cones. Uh, inks and pigments are those. And so they will filter and subtract out certain colors. Okay. Yeah, we'll call it good. Let's do... I, th I thought about it. Should I should I rewear this shirt on test day? <laughs> so something that always confused me. You know what? Um, yeah. Do you remember which color gets refracted the most? Shout it out when you remember. Blue. Let's see. So I'm going to send white light through a prism. It's because it's high frequency, it does refract the most. Blue refracts the most. It's getting deviated the most. It's because it has the high frequency, it has more interactions in the glass. So it's delayed more and travels more slowly, is affected more, refracts more. Blue does. I'm going to leave that up. This is diffraction. This is called a diffraction grating, and basically it's a whole bunch of little slits. Last lecture I, I shown light through slits, openings, and edges, and we saw it bend. Well, you can put a whole bunch of them really close to each other and make it more effective. Basically, that means you get more interference. And these slits are really close together. So what will that do to the, to the diffraction? Small openings? You just answered it. Well, test is Monday. <laughs> it, more diffraction. So we send the slit up here. I used this before once, but I didn't explain what it, was, what it was. Now you understand what's going on. It needs to be darker. So the white light comes through on the left. Right. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Somebody, sorry, somebody used our red laser pointer and didn't tell me it, the batteries went dead. So we'll use this one. Okay, over here on the left. White light. And it is diffracted. It's trying to go that direction, and it gets spread out over to here. And here, which color gets spread out the most? Red, because it's farthest away. And that's because it has a longer wavelength. So it's af affected more by the openings, the diffraction grating. More diffraction, more spreading. So notice these are opposite, and this is what used to confuse me when I was a student. Refraction, blue gets refracted the most. Diffraction, blue gets diffracted the least of the visible colors. Refraction is the slowing down. What causes refraction? 
the change in speed. Blue is a higher frequency, more interactions, slower. Yeah, refraction is over here. Blue is bent more because it has a higher frequency. It has more interactions in the glass, so it's slowed down more and affected more. Refraction. That's going through the medium. I mean changing mediums into something. Diffraction is not changing mediums. It's just getting squished through an opening or past an edge. And now the size of the wavelength that goes, is getting crammed through there, so to speak, is affected more. Red has the longer wavelength, so it's diffracted more. Blue has that higher frequency, which gives it smaller wavelengths, so it's not as affected as much with diffraction. Questions? Yep, has been all along. When light goes through glass, it's called refraction. And then through like a slit like that, that's the defraction. Because you're shrinking the opening, so defraction. Correct. That's, that one's diffraction, where the waves are trying to, they don't change mediums, but they go past an edge or through, through an opening or several openings. Now, just because I think this is really cool, it's not to confuse you, but it looks pretty. Let's focus more. It's so far away from the screen, it doesn't really show up. I'll just rotate one of them. So same thing with the single slit at the bottom. Like here. You get diffraction. Well, think of this as like a really big slit. And so the white light is diffracted also. You get red, green, and blue just like down here. But because it's really big, one side of that opening can overlap with a different color. So like a big red square gets diffracted over here. A blue square gets diffracted less. But that red and blue square overlap. And what do red and blue light make? Magenta. You see the magenta there? That's where those two are overlapping. But you also get cyan and yellow where the other combinations overlap. So it's still diffraction, it's just a really big slit. So a lot of th times you see complementary colors, those uh, cyan, magenta, and yellow. Quite often it's because of diffraction. With uh, thin films like soaps and ga water, gasoline, or it's another example some shells. You ever looked at those, the shells and the, they look like iridescent colors? Your book talks about iridescent colors. That's from the thin film. But it's still color mixing. You're either canceling one out or, or not. Lest you're confused, I just crossed there. The shells and thin films, that's not diffraction. <laughs> this is. All right, lights back on. Uh, while I'm on that, holograms. This is one of the best holograms I've ever seen. You guys won't be able to see it completely up there, so stop me five minutes at the end. Tell me to shut up. I mean, be quiet. <laughs> so you can come down and just walk past this. Holograms are... Uh, basically caused by interference. 
this photographic plate has an interference pattern etched in it, so to speak. Uh, the way they form these is they take laser light and they shine it onto the plate. It's spread out over the entire plate. That same laser light will go and bounce off of an object. It will reflect. And every point on the object reflects back to the entire plate. You get light from this point, so to speak. You know, if it's right here, it lands on this part of the plate, and this plate, and this plate, and it covers the whole thing. Well, when the reflected light and the light that goes straight there land on the plate, they interfere constructively and destructively. The reflected light, because of the surface features of the uh, object, get out of phase with the original light. And so you get an interference pattern. And this basically becomes a really big diffraction grating. So when you shine light through any part of it, it recreates the image that formed it. Holograms are awesome. I mean, there's more to it, but you guys understand the basic principles. It's diffraction that splits the light up. And then they interfere so that you see the same image they used to make it kind of like breaking down the waves into their individual little sine waves like we did with Fourier analysis. With our harmonics, you get this really complicated waveform. It's made up of a whole bunch of other little waves with certain amplitudes. You're superimposing them all together. That's kind of what a, def a hologram does. So I'll plug that in at the end there. Now, Polarization is the one thing we haven't discussed. It won't take long. It's the one thing that only works with transverse waves. Do you remember the difference between transverse and longitudinal? Good. I'm seeing head nods anyway. Transverse, the vibration is, you know, if it's up and down, which way is the wave traveling? Maybe I'll ask that one on the final then. <laughs> Transverse waves, if they're vibrating up and down, the vibrations are perpendicular to the direction of the wave. So the wave would be going side to side. Can be going this way or this way. Both either are perpendicular to this. Light is a transverse wave. You have those electric and magnetic fields that are oscillating. So they're, they're vibrating, say, up and down or side to side, but the wave is moving that way. They're still perpendicular. I, you have pictures in your book. I showed you some pictures. But you got an electric field, say, going up and down, a magnetic field going left and right. Kind of looks like this while the wave's traveling. Longitudinal waves are sound waves. That's where the uh, compressions and rarefactions are in the same direction the wave's moving. That's longitudinal. That kind will not work with polarization because they're in the same direction. Transverse will because they're perpendicular. So you can picture a light wave, and you might have the electric field vibrating vertically because some electron, remember the source of all electromagnetic waves is some vibrating charge? The source of all waves is something vibrating. For light, there's some charge vibrating and you can get an electric field. But there might be another electron going horizontally. You can have electric fields in any direction. We've just always picked up and down because it was convenient. But light is usually vibrating in all directions. So if you have an electric field going up and down, its magnetic field is side to side. Whoops. But if you have an electric field going in a diagonal, its magnetic field is diagonal too. It's still perpendicular to that one. Just think of the electric fields. They can be vibrating in all directions. This is called unpolarized light. That's what the light is we're seeing right now. If you polarize it, that's like sending it through some slits. It's not like a diffraction grating. This is just a model. These polaroids, 
we call them, like your sunglasses, have an axis to them. And when this unpolarized light tries to go through this polarizer, what do you think makes it through? All right. Squish them together. That's the only direction that can make it through. So if the Polaroid is vertical, then after it passes through, you get polarized light because it's only vibrating in one direction, only. That's what polarized light is. Now what if you send that polarized light through a second polarizer that's vertical, vertically aligned? Do you think it'll make it through? Yes, you're right. What if you turn it horizontal? Will it make it through? No. That's really all there is to polarization. I'll show that with this projector. The projector shines unpolarized light. So in all directions. So that's unpolarized. Here's a polarizer. The tape shows me the direction. So it's like a vertical Polaroid, like this. Now that's polarized light. You can't tell much difference, can you? It's a little dimmer because some of it got absorbed by the material, but not all of it. Now I'll take a second Polaroid. It's vertical. And it still makes it through. Now I'll slowly rotate the second Polaroid to be horizontal. Start vertical and now it's horizontal. I can't get through both. And that is very handy for blocking out glare or if you want light to go one place but not somewhere else. Have you gone to those 3D movies before and had to wear the glasses? Those are polarizers. If you have one pair of glasses, this will look funny, but if one is vertical and the other is horizontal, then this eye can't see any horizontally polarized light and this one can't see any vertical. And so you can control which image goes to which eye. And you can get 3D effects with that. They have to project polarized light, though, in order for that to enter your eyes. Glare is another useful reason for sunglasses. Let's see. If I reflect light off of this piece of glass, get closer to the screen. You see its reflection. Well, reflections off of non-metallic surfaces end up getting partially polarized. And so this is horizontal. The reflected light that makes it is horizontal. It becomes partially polarized horizontally. So the light rays from here are coming in all directions the field, but off of here it's going horizontally after it's reflected. So if I put a vertical Polaroid at, after it, we ought to be able to block it. Let's see. Okay, there's the polarized light and there it's blocked. Let me rotate the Polaroid so it's horizontal. You can see it again. Because the horizontally polarized light makes it through. Now let's block it with a vertical polarizer. It's always parallel to the uh, surface. So if this is sitting here horizontally, then the light that reflects off of it. Um, the polarized light is in the same direction, parallel with the surface. 
if the surface was like this, the light that would come off of it is polarized in this direction. Or the light from up there comes down this way, reflects off that way, and it's parallel to the surface that way. Most things we look at are horizontal. For example, you know, the water or glare off of somebody's hood, off of this water even. So given that, which way do you think sunglasses lenses are? Do you think they're vertical or horizontal? If most reflections we see are off of horizontal surfaces, then the polarized light's horizontal. To block that glare, you need vertical polarizers in your sunglasses. And that's, a, that's the easiest way to test if, if sunglasses are polarized. Look at some non-metallic surface or glare off a floor and just go like this. And if you see the glare disappear, you know they're polarizers. Yep. If you see a reflection reduce, then you, and you can figure out which direction it was polarized too because you know these are vertical. Kind of fun. Uh, let's see, I got other things. Let's see, let's review uh, that total internal reflection. Because that was one of the last things, last time. That's what this is for. So we've already been discussing this. You have a light ray come down. It slows down into the water, and you see it bending towards the normal. Then you have your refracted ray. Can you see the reflected ray? Some of it's still reflected, just not as much. If you change the uh, angle, you can change the angle, it gets refracted. It even works if you're coming the other direction. If you're going from the water into air, it gets bent. And in that case, do you see that it gets bent away from the normal? Also, notice the beam's a little orangish, isn't it? So what color must be getting subtracted from this? Do you remember what two colors make orange? What's that? Red's getting refracted. Green's getting refracted. We've got two votes. Who wants to go for blue? Go for blue, because that's the answer. <laughs> uh, orange was kind of like yellow, which was red and green. So some blue is getting scattered by the particles in here, like the sky. Uh, whether you knew it was absorption, scattering, or whatnot, you, you should realize at least blue somehow got subtracted from that. Red, red and green make yellow. Orange was, I think, a little less of green than red. They were both dimmer. Here's total internal reflection. Showed you with those fiber optic cables. At some angle, here's our incident angle right here with the normal, because the normal is perpendicular. So you can picture this as the angle. As that increases, see what happens to the refracted ray? It gets closer to the surface, a little further, a little further, a little further. If I, in whoop. If I increase this angle any more, that ray disappears right there. That's called the critical angle, where you no longer get refraction. But total, 100% internal reflection. That's 100% of the ray now, because you didn't lose any through refraction. And any angle bigger than that does the same thing. That's how you can kind of, you, we could trap those light rays, so to speak, in a fiber optic cable and transmit information that way. You can do it with a laser, too. Let's see. If I'm bigger than that critical angle, then none of it refracts out. But if I get, decrease the angle, oh, now we have refraction. We no longer have total internal reflection. There's still something that's reflected, but not all of it, like that case. That's fun... Uh, when you're uh, at the pool. Next time, go under the water. And when you look up at the surface, 
it looks kind of shiny and silvery, that's a clue that, hey, there must be some total internal reflection going because I cannot see through the objects over there on the ceiling or the wall. What I'm seeing is the interpreter in Brian reflected off the surface. Just like that, their light comes through this side, reflects off this surface and goes back down into my eye. It doesn't refract through at that angle. So it looks shimmery. Here's a little uh, example of that. I taped two cards onto this piece of plexiglass, put them on there and slapped some tape on. We have a 10 and a 6. If I put them in the water, everybody will have a slightly different angled view. But can you see both of them in there? I'll let gravity let that fall. Keep watching it from whatever angle you're at. You might see some refraction. Do you see two images, some of you? Well, that's refraction because bending the light that way. Did anybody notice anything weird? Yeah, one of them looks like a mirror. It disappears. I'm magic. No, it's physics. <laughs> to me, this one, the 10 seemed to disappear. But I kind of see a mirror thing there. Oh, so my, that's telling me total internal reflection must be going on. And it is. This one, the 10, I just slapped on the, uh, on the plastic. And there's a little bit of air in between it and the plastic. So it's going from air to water, which has a certain critical angle. We just saw that. This one, though, I, I coated with grease. So there's no air in between the card and the plastic. It's going from grease to water. The change in speed isn't as great between grease and water as it is between air and water. It's a bigger speed difference. So there's less refraction. The critical angle is different. You can keep seeing that at your angles, but at this one, some of the light gets totally internally reflected, and you see that shimmery, silvery thing. You can do this uh, more simply at home. You have a clear glass. Take your dry hand and put it on like the, the back side here. And from the top, you can't see it because light's being totally internally reflected. Then get your hand wet and eliminate that air interface. And now you can see where your finger's wet. From below, you can always see it, but from above is where it's kind of fun. So you guys have any questions yet about anything? I've been reviewing lots. The colors are as they are. You'll need to know those. Yes, Brian? Yeah, fish can hide from us because we can only see them at certain angles. Here's one, here's one to keep you up at night. How would vision change for a fish if they lived outside of the water? Your clue is they're used to, uh, they can see because their eyeballs will bend the light rays as they enter them. That's how we're able to see. But it goes from water to their eye. Will there be more bending or less bending if it went from air into their eye. More. Yeah, so if they could see in water, they can't see now in air. They've just become nearsighted. Why do we wear goggles when we swim? We can see better. Air to our eyes. That's what our eyes are designed, not water to our eyes. You can think of some of those things. Let's think If you've got questions, shoot. I'm looking at the test here to see if I... Uh, Really need to tell you something else. Oh, I, we kind of came up. Clouds. Do you remember why clouds are white? What colors make up white? Red, green, and blue. And there must be a clouds made up of water droplets, right? Which ones scatter the blue light? The tiny ones, yeah because blue has smaller wavelengths. But red and green are being scattered too, so a cloud's made up of a variety of 
Water droplets, that was their homework question. Well, I'll stop there, because I think I did what I wanted to do here. I'll let you come look at this really complicated diffraction grating. It's diffracting the light and interfering into the, one of the coolest holograms I've ever seen. So there you go. Have a good weekend.